Greetings and hallucinations, all you folks out there. It is time for the second entry in the Gap tutorial series. Now, this map, you've got to really put on your thinking caps. This is one of the highest levels of strategy involved with FA. And since there is a 4 versus 4 version of the map and a 5 versus 5, I figured I needed to do a second tutorial for how to win every game of Gap ever. Now, you saw before how effective the strategies were in the 4 versus 4. The problem is the drops don't work on this map because you have five ACUs instead of four. So that means that more people are responding to your attacks and it's not nearly as likely to work out for you. So we had to develop a new strategy and I'm going to introduce that to you guys and hopefully you can use it to absolutely pound your opponents into oblivion. On the left hand side we have Polos Hermanos, Kieser, Pac, Flash, and last but certainly not least Pathfinder. On the right hand side, we have my team. This is little old lovely me, Brink of Insanity, and that is Ionic, the guy that I usually play with. And then we're joined by three people who we do play with occasionally and we get in mumble with Mr. Bunny Pants, Chaos Wars, and Kindry. Now, to dive into this strategy, you will see that there are three mid slots, so three ACUs go forward. This does definitely reduce the amount of rage that you see on Gap of Rohan because there's not incessant screaming from anyone and everyone about how all four ACUs should be going to mid otherwise we lose the game. So you've got three going forward here and it looks like we've got four going forward here. The difference between the two sides is that uh, the bases have been given. We've got these two going to Ionic and this one going to me. Now, the reason for that will be explained momentarily, but until we get there, we're just going to have to observe all of these pretty little uh, ACU avatars moving towards the center. Now, Ionic looks like he's moving towards the center, but he will stop about halfway, so you don't have to worry about him going to mid. This is the plan that we were discussing in Mumble. See, we had this really funny thought. What would happen if all the ACUs met in the middle and there's one more over on this side than there is on this side? It would be three on four, which is usually a bad thing, right? Well, let's go ahead and just see what happens here and we'll decide for ourselves whether or not that is good or bad. We've got air scouts heading across. Polos Hermanos pushing one. Looks like Pathfinder will be pushing air scouts as well. They're gonna see all that lovely blue color covering up about three-fifths of this side. They will have to decide for themselves what that means. You can see here at the mid, Pac diving directly in for the oh-so-precious reclaim, while our team is deciding to have none of that. Pathfinder commenting on the fact that there's lots of blue over there. We've got a double team, Mr. Bunny and Chaos, pounding down on Pac's ACU and Kindry casually walking around in circles, laying down fire on Keezer. Of course, uh, Kindry has more health to begin with and then is also firing about twice as much. So this is going to be a uh, bit hairy for Keezer momentarily. Flash is coming forward. Stop killer Rios. Apparently Keezer does not like to be ganged up on. Um, Pac is going to try to retreat past his teammate. Flash is going to try to get in between these two guys. And you can see here the retarget. Pac is at 3,400 health. Mr. Bunny Pants and Chaos Wars are going to try to fire on Flash now. And it's not really working out as well as they'd hope. But Flash is actually helping us out by moving in that direction to get in between the fire. And now the targeting is correct. On the northern side, Polos Hermanos has moved to the mid to help out his teammate. Kieser is dangerously low at 4,000. Polos Hermanos is full. Now, this is where we execute Plan Alpha. These guys, woo, crazy camera there, are all pulling together in the mid. We've got 2K, 5, 6, 7, 3, 5. Can you guess what's going to happen? And kaboom! That, my friends, is a control K. You can see Ionic was actually a good teammate and gave everybody overcharges. How nice. That 
It is a three versus four, and that is how you're supposed to handle it. Ionic standing just outside the blast radius on that nuke. Very nice placement of his ACU there. Um, <laughs> and here comes the rage quit. And there it is. Alrighty, quick explanation of what happened. We were discussing in Mumble the fact that, technically speaking, 3 versus 4 is a bad thing. But if you look at it realistically, 3 versus 4, if you manage to take out all 4 and trade your 3 for them, you're actually 1 ACU ahead. And if you go in intending to trade, that means that you can also save all of your bases because your teammates are building them and not you. So even though it is share till death, you don't lose any eco, so you'll essentially have, well in this case, four ecos, because I was not paying attention to let bombers kill all of my stuff, four ecos versus one eco, even though it's only two ACUs versus one ACU. Quick explanation of what happened in the middle, ACU nukes are 2,500 damage apiece, total them out for three, that's 7,500, get one ACU below 7,500 health, control K, and that's 10,000 total damage, which is enough to take out a Cybern ACU or any ACU below 10,000 health when the fifth ACU nukes any other ACUs within the blast radius will die at tech one because that's 12,500 damage and the highest health ACU is UEF at 12,000. So there you go, pro level meta. That is how you win every time on Gap of Rohan when the stupid masses stick to the game plan and send all their ACUs to middle. You know what? The middle mass is not that important. All right, guys, that is going to wrap it up for this cast. Hopefully you learned something important, and I will catch you in the next round. Thanks so much for watching.